Hello and welcome back to another video. So in this video we will talk a little bit about the Ripple D server. So also something, so it, so it's pronounced Ripple D as far as I'm concerned. And also on Linux, uh, when something ends on D, the D stands for daemon. So it's the Ripple daemon. And right, so that's basically the program running on all the validators and also on all normal nodes because you can run the Ripple D server on multiple mo uh, modes and we will have a look at the configuration. So basically anybody can run a node or a validator, so depending on which mode you set it. Uh, let's quickly look at the hardware requirements. Because so the first thing is many people claim that no uh, nobody can run uh, can run a validator that doesn't work uh, only Ripple chooses who can run a validator and that is simply not true so anybody can run a validator uh, or a node so it's up to you in which mode like I said run it and let's look at the specifications because unlike on other blockchains where you need uh, an, much energy power, uh, running a validator is not very energy uh, uh, energy wa wasteful, more or less. So it's it's basically just, it's very efficient. So let's have, have a quick look. So the operating system, they are uh, they are um, recommending, as you can see here, CentUS, so a Linux, uh, Linux distribution, Red Hat, Antwerp Linux, uh, Ubuntu, uh, or De uh, Debian, so all Linux distributions. And also, as we can see here, it, it's also in development for Mac OS and also for Windows. So the CPU just needs, uh, we can see, we can see here just plus uh, two, two cores, and it has to be 64 bits. Uh, as disk uh, storage, we only need f at a minimum of 50 gigabytes. And so for the database, and this database, so it's also uh, just saw on a online discussion with Matt Hamilton and some. Body who didn't understand how all of that worked, th this database, in this case, is, it's about a database on the machine itself. So if you run it on, if you run a Ripple D server, there's a there is a database, but it's a local database. So it's it sometimes the, so it's the, there are different implementations for that. I, I can't remember right now what kind of database it was. So there are different implementations. For example, it's H two and other things like that. These are like file databases which are running on your uh, on your uh, computer. But we will look later at that. Uh, obviously, they are recommending having a uh, SSD so that that you can qu quickly uh, access as read and write onto uh, the, the SSD and for read and write operations and at least eight gigabytes of RAM. So these are the specifications they're also showing here that a, a, a Amazon EC2 M3 large is sufficient. I also checked it online. So if you would like, um, uh, if you would like uh, rent that, so if you would pay for that using Amazon EC2, you would pay about I think 150 euros per month or something. Uh, 150 euros per month or something like that. So not too much, more or less. Uh, but let's continue maybe it was even less i can't remember it now exactly but um right so there's an entire guide how to install it's so already did all of that so you just follow all these steps so it is would be the case for ubuntu i do have so we just follow all these steps here i do have uh the ubuntu subsystem on my, on my computer so i already installed it and what we will be looking at is the config file so i will use i will be using the vim and let's have a look at the config file. So having a look at the config file, we can also understand like all the functionality and what else is basically uh, there to it. So I'm just, I just have to check one more time. Ah, yes, because I'm here. Okay, my bad. So we will have to zoom out because otherwise I can't see it. We'll open it one more time though. Uh, so we can, ah, right. So they are using, they're using, so one thing we just figured out, they're using NewDB or RocksDB. Uh, oh, oh or, they, or they're using both, basically. But these are, like like I said, additional databases which have been used, uh, and they're running only on your, your computer or on the device where you're running your police server. So we can have another look so we can see those SQL... Uh, also, uh, maybe having a SQLite database, so we can see they're just so there's the diagnostics part. I will be quickly going to the beginning, so we can see here the contents. We've got the server, the peer protocol, Ripple protocol, HTTPS client, reporting modes. We can see here if you uh, uh, if you define some uh, uh, so different reporting modes, we can uh, configure information about the database, about voting, what we're voting for. Let's have a look at voting. 
Um, right, so, okay, yes, so now we're here to voting part. We can, for example, see here uh, that this is basically the, the uh, settings all the validators in the network and also each node can set. So important, obviously, this is important for the validators themselves, but for example, we can see here the reference fee uh, equals, so if we would, be, if we would if we remove the comment here and define it here, um, then we would set it. So we can see here, example reference, so 10 drops, for example. So this can all be set here. We here for example, also setting the owner reserve. So for example, to 5 XRP, so we would have to then uh, remove that one. So now, uh, now, now I have here the definition of the owner reserve, which is basically 5 XRP. So currently the owner reserve is uh, now, yeah, right. The only reserve is five XP currently. So now they're trying to uh, they to lower it to two XP. So they are currently voting that way. They're voting for two XP. So the account reserves is also some people are already voting for lowering that to ten XP. So that this is what is right now being considered. So this setting some of the validators already did. So we can check this quickly out. In the on the validators tab here, so you can see here the base reserve, so which is here the account, so th they're calling it the base reserve, uh, but this is the account reserve basically, this one here, and there and there's already XRP scan for example voting for 10 XRP, and we've got another um, owner reserve which is they are voting for two, and right there are already some values voting for that, but not enough because we've got 39 validators, so it will still take some time until that takes into effect, but it's voting on it, and as soon as enough people are found to vote on that, then the account reserve is being, is being lowered. Right, and many already did this setting, so if, if they do this, uh, if enough do this, exactly like this, so we can see here, Alloy EE did this, Pithom, and so on, so they all, uh, they all uh, set, uh, configured it that way. So, right, so let's continue here. So we can see here the Miscellano Ms. settings regarding node size, signing support. So let's see if there's something else interesting in there. So we do have here care right. So we can see here there's already some settings for the server. Okay, this is just about the certificate the key, but we, like I said, it's just I just wanted to show you what the configuration does look like. So you know. Okay, the protocol is WS WebSocket, if I'm not mistaken here. Uh, we can also see, okay, where the database, so the node, DB, node uh, database uh, is stored, so it's in Virulib, Ripple D, Deep Database, NewDB, so I told you that they're using NewDB. Uh, then, right, right, so there again, Virulib, Ripple, uh, Ripple D, and DB. What else is in there? So there were also some interesting settings that we'll be going... Uh, oh, okay, not that. Let's go back to the beginning and we'll be looking at the Ripple, Pro Ripple Protocol. Ripple... Uh, let's continue. Uh, Ripple Proto... Okay, okay um, I'm just trying to... F yeah, it's been a while since I've been using uh, the search function here. Ah in the VI, but I think I forgot it, but let's try I'm gonna just going to try it differently, so I'm just going to look for the free point here. No. Yes, protocol here. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, so now I'm here. I already forgot how to navigate. Yeah, it's been a while. So let's just keep looking at all the different settings we still have here. We can set a validation, a validated token. So I cannot give you the entire, so the, it's already all of this described here, but it's just interesting having a quick look at all of that. So the network ID, okay, if this value is okay, right? So the, the client, and there's also the mode. So you can also, uh, regarding the reporting node, or if there's a source web support, we can set the port for the web socket. Uh, right. Okay, what else is there? Ah, okay, yeah. So this was the start sequence. So I guess this would be the block height at the beginning, more or less. Because as I remember, so the, the number is all the specific. So I think because some blocks were lost, quote unquote lost at the beginning. That's why they set the start sequence at that, I guess. But I'm, 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 I'm not trying to say them I'm, right. I'm just, I'm just recalling something like that. So sorry for not looking it up properly before the video. So let's just look one last time at the peer protocol or the server. Yeah, let's just go to one and have one last look at the servers. If there's something uh, we are missing, basically, 
So which might be interesting also how advanced all of that is. So we've got all the server settings here. We've got, okay, right. So anything else, we can admin, admin user. So these are just settings for, for the Oracle Cloud server on this computer. We can see here the compressed level, so we can set a compressed level, a memory level, um, the domain name, so we can also have a look at the peer protocol, so cluster nodes, okay, so if there are any uh, full nodes uh, where it should all be, uh, so full history nodes where it should all be saved to, so, oh, right, so there are some very interesting settings also in here. So we can see here a transaction queue, we can see, so th this as we can see here is experimental, so not yet to be used, but let's just in queue, you can, we we'll limit it to this, okay, you can also set the minimum queue size, the refresh sequence percentage, minimum escalation multiplier, so all of this described in here, but there are just some very interesting properties, just knowing a little bit more uh, how advanced all of it is and what, basically what all in here works and uh, how to define all of that in here. So I hope it was an interesting video for you. So if I will, I will link the guide so you can also just install that uh, on your subsystem. You don't have to run it just so you have the config file and just see a little bit more and know what it looks like. But you could also check it out on the, on the public GitHub repository. And well, see you in the next video.